All right, well, now it's time for my long overdue thoughts on Duet. And uh, I shot this originally, but uh, I decided to reshoot it just because I don't think I look very good. And I'm actually using a selfie stick for the first time. And it's not because of vanity, it's just because I think you'll have less shaking of the camera. So, uh, I'm going to do the, my thoughts on Duet a little bit differently. Rather than telling you, uh, rating the episode overall, immediately, I will take a look at the first 90%, uh, rate that, and then the last 10%. It'll all work out. So, let's go ahead and start with the first 90% and the positives. Uh, I was stunned absolutely stunned by the uh, just the sheer amount of talent that they have working in the Arrowverse. How many people can sing and dance, and obviously they brought in some other dancers, but this was some impressive talent. It does illustrate that even if you choose the route of acting, sometimes you have to go where the bucks are, which is more often going to be television rather than something like musical theater. But clearly there were some people who could really bring it, so I was really impressed with that. I, I like the idea of the music meister uh, as portrayed in this episode. Certainly very different than what you got on the Batman Brave and the Bold uh, cartoon series. But he is kind of an interdimensional imp, not in the style of Mischick's Pitlick, uh, but as Andrew pointed out, kind of like Batmite. And he's kind of a voice of the fan, in a way, as the way this episode works out. And I should say lots of spoiler warnings ahead. Um, he's a voice of the fans, and uh, really does serve the story well. Um, there are some problems, but I'll get to that in the more uh, negative portion. Uh, I, I was really impressed by most of the singing numbers, just for their pure uh, quality. Uh, Melissa Bonet really just uh, uh, gave a beautiful rendition of Moon River. Uh, it was just absolutely phenomenal. Couldn't actually believe it was the same uh, uh, actor. The, open, the song of Put a Little Love in Your Heart was a little bit generic, uh, but I actually thought the performance was really energetic. And... Uh, then the uh, way that uh, the they uh, did the did the singing of more I could not uh, I cannot wish you was uh, it was phenomenal it was probably the best that has been done uh, and I checked the internet looking for different versions of it uh, now to be fair to all other versions uh, that song was written for one person not as a three part song uh, but that they but that it worked out in this three-part piece, just everybody just absolutely uh, nailed it. It was uh, incredibly solid uh, and memorable performance. And, I th and then I think you had uh, Grant Gustin. Uh, he was great in this, just kind of, uh, what I liked about him was kind of the, uh, the non-speaking acting. Because he, he just kind of walked around this thing as kind of playing the straight man to all of these antics that were going on. You know, it's like, wait, where did the guy with the guitar come from? Wait, you know, the uh, music master threw away his jacket. It's like, wait, wait, where did that go? You know, it was more with a glance. And he has, you know, a perfect face for comedy and really... Um, conveying the humor of the situation um, without having to say anything. That's incre incredible talent that we don't get to see week from week to week. So I loved all that about the uh, uh, episode. Now in terms of some more mixed thought, oh wait, oh, and one more thing on the positive. Uh, I love the uh, staged fight uh, where you had, uh, uh, you had the Martian Man Hunter on Earth One, and uh, teamed up with Vibe and Kid Flash, uh, and it does show just the strength of the supporting cast of heroes that they're building on this show, and it was really cool. And it, it does go back to uh, 
Uh, it does go back to Music Monster being the voice of the fans and just being a fan. It's like, hey, I get to go ahead and go head to head with these three heroes. That is going to be cool. Even though they're going to kick my tail, it's going to be awesome. So, on the more mixed front, um, it was really hard. I think mostly it's going to be on the musical portion. I think the real life stuff was okay right up until the end. Um, now the big thing is Music Meister's explanation that this was all from Barry and Carr's heads. And we could have been in a war movie or we could have been in a space opera. But thankfully we ended up in a musical. And I call nonsense on this. Okay, you are a fifth dimensional being with all of this mighty power and you have nothing to do with them being in a musical. You know, but the thing is, you are not war movie meister. You are not a uh, space opera meister. You are music meister. It was always going to be a musical. And trying to sell it as a shared uh, delusion just, uh, yeah, that, do, that doesn't work. Um, I, I, al I, also, uh, I also had a, uh, had a bit of a problem with the, um, with the follow-up. What happened after they sang, uh, More I Could Not Wish You. Because, essentially... Uh, Barry and Carl went to the two sides, the two families, uh, to convince them to let their children uh, go ahead and to uh, date each other and to be accepting. And so they sing the song. And the, the whole gist of the song is that what they really wish for their children is that they experience true love. And then immediately after singing the song, they announce that they're going to war with, uh, with the other side, not telling their children. And, and I know that it was a very pretty song, but you have got to... It's one of the big expectations of a musical, because this wasn't just an opening number where you can sing whatever is a fitting theme for the show. This is a big decision-making song. This is a song where you're deciding the what, what is the central plot line of this story and how you as a character are going to respond to it. And now, if we've been given some reason to think that the fathers, they're not necessarily playing um, fair here. Uh, or if we were given some reason, uh, uh, then that would be one thing, but we're not. Instead, they sing a song that points one direction, and uh, it was even said that uh, the point of a musical, uh, uh, I think John Barrowman said, the point of a musical is when you can no longer say what you feel and you have to sing it. Well, it kind of cuts against that to violate the whole purpose of this decision song. It would be like uh, when Jalvon... Uh, Jean Valjean sings, bring him home, bring him home. And then instead he throws the boy out to be killed by the government forces uh, during the siege. Or it would be like when the, um, in Sound of Music, where the mother superior sings, climb every mountain. Okay, I'm not going to try and sing that. And Maria says, so I can marry Captain Von Trapp? No, absolutely not. You have to take your vows and become a nun. You totally undercut the point of the song. And so, yeah, that's annoying. It's not a clever twist. It's just annoying. Because it's being done to contrive together the end of the musical piece that will require Monal and Iris to travel in and, again, they're trying to one-up Disney here. Because, you see, Disney, you see, in the Arrowverse, musical style, true love's kiss can cure a bullet wound. Uh, take that, Snow White. Eh, 
it was just a contrived way to um, bring them in that didn't do anything emotionally for the uh, emotionally for the characters or for the protagonists that they couldn't have gotten from the musical plot. The problem, of course, being the musical plot was kind of thin. So it was a whole circle of contrivances here that hurt that. And you also can say that the Monel uh, car relationship ha um, kind of had a weak resolution from a character standpoint. The one other thing that's kind of mixed was the I'm Your Super Friends song. Well, when my wife and I watched it, <laughs> we were both like, oh. But watching it a few times, it has a lot of charm. It is the ultimate cheesy super uh, song. And it, it has some uh, hilarious points to it. And the tap dancing is nice. But the, it, it does show that the person who wrote it perhaps wasn't as familiar with all the series and continuity. Because uh, Barry makes a reference of not being impressed with Superman. And there's a very good reason for that, Barry. You've never met him. Uh, so, and it's also kind of a weird line in the song. Because it's like, let me go ahead. I want to say the nicest thing I can about you as a compliment. Because this is a compliment. So, Kara... I'm going to insult your only living relative. What? But it was cute overall. Uh, now, and so for the first 90%, I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10. It was fun, it was enjoyable, but it was often contrived. Now we turn to the last tenth, uh, which has Barry singing the big song to Iris. And I, I absolutely adored that final scene. There was so much that was right with it. The big thing about it is that our expectations had been set. The musical part was over. We were not expecting another musical number. Certainly not the best uh, musical number in the entire show. And certainly the best original number. And it was a beautiful song, beautifully sung. It uh, captured uh, where the characters have been at in the story, where Barry's journey as a character was, uh, just like the perfect musical song uh, should. But at the same point, it had enough just emotion in it. It's going to be used at a lot of geek weddings. Uh, the acting by Barry and... Uh, by Grant Gustin and uh, by Candace Patton was perfect. And, you know, she, her acting, she did so much without hardly saying anything. And it was beautifully directed. The lighting uh, and just the way it flowed together uh, is just absolutely superb. So for that little bit of the show, I will give that a 10 out of 10. And overall... That, uh, this episode gets seven Scarlet Speedsters out of ten. So that's my thoughts, and uh, uh, thanks so much for watching.